Hey, everybody. It's me, Mr. Big. And it's your lucky day. Um, I got some time. Um, got some time. Got some caffeine. Yay, go me. I'm going to talk about an independent film a bit. I'm going to talk about some ideas and all kinds of other good stuff for a few minutes. Today's basic conversation about why most independent films never get off the ground. I reiterate, as you might as well, even on Twitter and Facebook, that your friends, good people that you know, good people that you love, good, really good people have a film idea. It never That film idea never gets going. Worse, they put love and sweat and tears and a couple of bucks in the film and it says on the shelf. It happens. Christ, I got a film on the shelf. Um, it happens. I know really good filmmakers with films on shelves. It happens. I expect it to now. But again, it is, right? Well, that might be a couple of things. Most people do not realize how hard it is to make a movie. You can't do more. You can't sit there with your friends. Let me back up. It's one thing for you and your kids to go, go in your backyard with your cell phone, with your G.I. Joes and dolls, and maybe a pet dog, and do a movie. No problem. In fact, that's what you want to do. More party to it. Put it on YouTube. Have fun with it, right? By all means, have fun with your films like that that you do with your kids or your good friends. Maybe you do nothing more than Shakespeare in the park. Get together, do a Shakespeare, Shakespeare play in the park, film it, put it on YouTube. More power to you. That gives you credence. That gives you ability. That gives you practice. And practice makes perfect. One thing I'm always preaching, and yes, I'm excited because I'm talking fast, is the idea that if actors and producers and stuff want to practice to Shakespeare in the park, do poll reading. Do things like that. You're free, public domain stuff. You can do f have fun with them and goof around with them and put them on YouTube. I know uh, more than one star, star with quotes, that got their breaks because maybe not doing A-type films, but do commercial works and do quite good doing them because they do things like that. I know a girl, well, she's no girl. She's not way over 18. That's got her start doing commercials because for a while she was going in the at least, and make up new commercials, make up all kinds of goofy things. People saw them. People liked what she was doing. They liked her talent. They liked her spunk. They liked her abilities. They gave her opportunities. Most people never do those things. Most people do might talk a good idea. I, I'm good at that myself, but things have changed lately. Um, anyway, back to the point. It takes a lot of time to put up a film. You need crew. You need, you need crew. You need cast. You need actors and actresses. You need extras. You need a lot of people on a set. If you do a drama, for instance, a documentary, if you do a drama, you need crew, more than one person. You need a camera operators. You need a sound guy. You need a security guy to keep people away. You need people to keep track of the paperwork. You need the paperwork because if you do a film, everybody, everybody has to sign a release. Everybody has to sign a release. Everybody gets, signs a waiver. The film production should have a, should have an insurance. Mind you, the Shakespeare in the Park, but maybe not so much. Definitely not you playing with the kids in the backyard. Don't need one. You know, you probably should have one kind of sort of something. I will make the call find out if you need if it's a good idea or not for Shakespeare in the Park. Maybe maybe get hired by the city to do something like that, right? You, you might make a couple of bucks. Doing something like that, doing Shakespeare in the park because we got, instead of seeing, we got a lot of parks that nobody never uses, no uses for nothing. If we did things like Shakespeare in the park, people might come see them. People would get to know you. People would be interested in what you're doing, right? They would watch it on YouTube. Which other things you would put on YouTube, right? Opportunities arise because of action, but most people don't want to take that action. Most people don't want to do the minimum work of making sure everybody signs a waiver. Everybody signs a waiver. Everybody signs a release. I was on one film set, I think I've talked about it before, where the guy doing the film didn't have releases from everybody. Really? Yeah. And during the process of the filmmaking, he pissed off so many people that we realized he needed to sign waiver, get waivers, get, I'm sorry, get releases signed. They would say, fuck you. I'm sorry, I mean swear. They basically told him to call him sand. That film sits. I, I film. I had it played it at my first film festival in Racine back in the day. God, some that time ago. But my knowledge that films, well, 
I don't think I send release. I was never asked to, right? Not, not that I would care. Um, but yeah, that's fine. Um, is what it is. I mean, that you need to sign those things. Those documents need to be signed. Why you need insurance? I'll tell you an easy one. You're doing a reduction. Doing what it might be doing, right? Someone trips and falls. Not your fault, not their fault, not nobody's fault. Say they break a leg. Okay, they that medical pay that medical bill paid for. Do you have insurance to cover that? You best. Because they might come after you to make you pay that bill. Do you have the cash to pay that bill? Do you have the cash to pay that medical bill? And maybe the weeks they're off work because they can't walk for a while? Have that insurance. Have that insurance. Yes, a waiver does help, but a good lawyer can bust any waiver, right? Waivers can be found online. Waivers can be found online, right? Releases can be found online. If all fails, check what's available online. Use the free resources online. But please, love of God, use them. Then there's not enough money. It costs money to do a film. Now, you may not be paying... You may not be paying your cast. You best be paying your cameraman. You best be paying your editor. You might not like what you get back. If you don't, you might get anything back. I mean, why wouldn't you... Why would I, as an editor... Oh, the director's going to make some money. He wants to make some money. The producer wants to make some money for this film. Why would I work for free? At the end of the day, they're going to get paid. And don't tell me I should do it because I'm a pal. I'm sorry. But friendship ends when I realize... They're going to make money from my volunteer effort. That's one thing. Again, if it shakes during the park, I'm getting that practice. I'm getting practice editing. I'm getting practice doing sound design. I'm getting practice doing web page. I'm getting this practice. Nobody's making a dime. Everybody's getting practice. Everybody's being able to build a resume, right? Nobody's really getting paid. Now, mind you, I guess people doing Shakespeare in the park, sort of an idea. Somebody might find out, somebody might find out about it and say, I'll have a check for a million dollars. I don't think these things happen. They might be asked to put together a reduction for someone else where people would get paid. But as per the Shakespeare in the Park, not so much. Even if you have a YouTube channel with, say, 200,000 subscribers and people watching, yeah, you might make a couple hundred bucks a month. That's not really enough money to go around. And that would be a discussion you have before you do the Shakespeare in the Park, is that what would happen to any money that might come in? Right? You have that, you sign it. Everything is agreed upon. Everything is signed black and white on paper, notarized and witnessed. Because you have to have that legal documentation. The last thing you want to do is go to court. last thing you want to go to court. So that means the lawyers get paid. Now, mind you, it might be a good idea to have a lawyer Take a couple minutes to look at the stuff, right? It shouldn't be a lot of money to have a lawyer and talk to you about it. Maybe it's a good idea to befriend a person in college and law school that would do that for you. You know, for a couple of drinks at the bar, it would help you do that sort of thing, right? But be careful. I myself would hire a lawyer. My, I myself would hire a real lawyer. If that's going to be a real reduction with real money, real money is anything over, say, $5,000, I'm going to have a lawyer look at the paperwork. Because I don't want to get sued. Even if it's not my fault. I don't want to go to court. I don't want to go and, and, and pay a lawyer mega box to protect me, protect my house. It's important as well. I'm no legal expert. But I would do things in film as a corporation, have that corporate shell, have that protection, right? These are simple things. If you don't have any business sense, right, and you should have business sense, Take a business class from your local technical college. Go into the small business administration and utilize what they call SCORE, which is a program that will introduce you to executives, retired executives, retired business maybe people, will talk to you about your business for free. Utilize the resources that are available for you for free. That's just one of them. There's many more, many more. Utilize what you have. Um, but those are the, and of course, you're not paying anybody, right? You're not paying anybody. You're doing things nights and weekends. You're doing your big production nights and weekends. Okay? Things happen from week to week. Jane may have to work overtime. Joe might have child care problems. Nancy might be going through a divorce. Henry might be having to go to the reserve active duty for a couple of weeks. All kinds of things happen. This could disrupt the film production schedule. Can end a film. 
Because let's say Henry breaks a leg. Let's go to the Blake Rook leg example. He doesn't work for a while. He can't do production for a while. And when he comes back because you can shoot around him, he long, no longer has short hair. He has long hair. And no longer is his hair brown, but it's been a while. He's gotten gray. Yeah. Are you going to spend the money to dye his hair? Are you going to spend the money to make to do continuing? It's going to make sure that the outfits that he had before is the outfits he's going to use now. Are you going to take that time? Are you going to find a volunteer to take that time? Because they'll take a volunteer until there's somebody being paid. Take the time to make sure those things happen. Do you have that? Most people don't. Most people get into things, oh, this, this is a couple of days, right? A couple of weekends, right? Fine, you can do that. It can be done. It has been done. Most projects take longer than you expect because weather is fickle. It wasn't supposed to rain today. It's going to rain off and on, right? If I was going to shoot today, no, I don't think I'm doing that, right? So what time are we going to use next to shoot something now? All that has to be build into the schedule, right? That's why doing things nights and weekends don't work out well. That's why for a totem pole, if it ever happens, if we ever do the exploitation films, I hope that we do, is my my firm intention to do that, right? It's going to be shot. It's going to be shot. Boom, boom, boom. If it's going to be, if you think it's, if I think it's take six days to shoot or 40 hours to shoot, it's going to be done in three or four days, right? Continuously, right? Then again, I'm jumping all over the place. But that's why most independent film projects don't go well because things fall apart. I've been lucky in the ones that I have been on. But most of those projects have only took in a month or so to put together. And it's been mostly people who are able to step up the plate, get things done. Um, in my film, that sits on a shelf. Um, it was a day shoot. What was going to take eight hours, it should take eight hours, took over 36 hours, right? And we were lucky because it only took 36 hours. I had 36 hours and I thought I was going to get a 22-minute film for a pilot, for a TV show. I got 12 minutes. 12 minutes isn't 18. 12 minutes isn't 22. I'm trying to read the comment here, but I can't. Oh. Um, thank you very much, Totem Pole. Um, it happens, right? I, I should have can't signed a, my first mistake, right? Not having a contract. I should have had a contract. Second mistake. When I didn't have the contract and things didn't go the way that I wanted them to, I should have said, nobody's going to get paid other than actors. Let's back up. My second mistake was I paid the director slash script writer in advance, right? My plot, my pilot was going to be a mafia show. Um, yeah, it was going to be a mafia show. Uh, it was going to a, the downfall of a mafia down, back and forth, as we can see if we could sell it, sell the pilot. I would be expanding to something lasting 16 weeks or so. But again, the pilot was never made because you can't sell a 20, you can't sell a 12 minutes short. It can't be done. It's not long enough to see how the people doesn't it's not well enough to, to resonate with the audience. It's not. Again, I fucked up. I'm sorry, I swore. I had to apologize. I messed up. Right? But that's how you learn. There's no harm in learning. There's no harm in failing when you need to learn, right? The question is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the question is, the question is, did I learn from it? Could I have done better? Interesting thing. Before I did the pilot, I did my demo reel, which you can see before my Frank film, my Frank documentary, right? I spent about as much money making that film. Everybody was paid. Everybody was paid very, very well. God, were they ever, right? Paid very well, because I believe in paying talent. They were talented, um, right? But the director... Last shot, editor went out of their way to make sure I was happy. I'd be happy. I'd be ecstatically pleased to work with that crew of people again, right? Some of those actresses that were in my demo reel, which you can see in front of my Frank film, um, went to thing went to do things in HBO, went to do things in Showtime. One of them has a career modeling now, right? 
things happen, right? It, it, all things are day and night. That's how you learn. That's how you might I learn now to have that contract. Make sure it's signed. Everybody in the demo reel had a release, right? Everybody in the demo reel signed a waiver. We had insurance, right? And we were protected five ways through Sunday. And when we when I walked in that set, when I walked in that door, it was yes, sir, no, sir. What can we do with you now, Mr. Clinton? When I went to do my my short my what's supposed to be pilot, all the things that I wanted to do, which I thought was pretty reasonable, I was not able to do. Okay. Mind you, that's when I should shut things down, but I didn't. I thought things would work out when. It is what it is. Um that's way that's how you learn things, right? That's how you learn. And I would do a far better job in the exploitation film. So we know exactly how to do and what go, or the pro wrestling thing, right? Which is nothing more than the same thing. A film for all practical purposes. And the same things get done. That's why you do them. That's why you don't make the mistakes that stop your thing from being sold. So now you have a film. Let's say you've done well, so your friends and family got together. They went out of their way to do something, right? The crew was fed. The cast was fed. So you get a couple bucks to pay people. Everybody's happy. Now you have a film. You're trying to sell it. Yeah. Okay. Most people think, well, I have to do is enter film festivals. I'll enter these film festivals and HBO will buy my film. No. I'll enter these film festivals and Showtime will buy my film. No. Or one other company will stop by and buy my film. No, they won't. Why? They're flooded with films every day. Most of the films at film festivals such as Stand That Sundance and the larger regional ones like Toronto International Film Festival, which are there to be submitted and be watched, have already been submitted. They know what's going to happen. They know what they're going to play before the festival starts. Right? The thing that your film is going to be entered in the Sundance has a goal of a chance to be entered, be selected and played, because, and you're nobody filmmaker, Mm, good luck with that. I don't think it's going to happen. Has it happened? Yes, it has. Odds of that, slim and none. Odds of even doing anything with the film festival, other than you pay the money to show your film, if you're lucky, they'll actually show it. Actually, if you're really lucky, they'll actually watch the film to see if they'll select it or not. You're really lucky, 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 if you haven't had sex with them, if they show your film, right, you're alone if you're a real film company is going to buy it from the film festival. You're far better off, far better off. As I discussed before, put it on, on YouTube, put it on your Amazon Prime, sell it that way, because the money spends this is good. The money I get from my film on Frank spends this is good as I would have gotten some money from HBO or from Showtime. Spends this is good. A lot easier to make. And I can repeat the same process when it comes to that in trying them. I can. In fact, I'll go bold when I say this. Given the money to make a documentary, I love documentaries, on the Purple Gang in of Detroit, which was a group of Jewish mafia, mafia, they were family of the, of the sort, of Jewish masters in Detroit in the 20s and 30s, for, I think it would be like $9,000. This is this preliminary budget. I'll throw them up there and things. Right? I could do that film in about six weeks, six to 12 weeks, that documentary, six to 12 weeks. i take me another month or so and have it edited down and put it on YouTube. I'm thinking a year, I'd have my money back. And in the year, and there were 12 months of that period, once it's on YouTube and that prime, I have my money back. I most likely would be enjoying a 30% return on my money. Not bad. Not bad. Given a given a drama film, same thing, same thing. Be a little bit more expensive. And with, with the drama film, you have more revenues, more streams of revenues you can go with. You can do the music. Um, you know, you can sell. You know, have somebody write, write some music for you. You can do the music thing. You get posters. You can sell. Same thing with the documentary, by the way. You got T-shirts, all kinds of things. Make make money. It's an effort. But I'll tell you what. If it's my film, I'll make that effort. If it's my film, everybody I know will be invited to watch that film. I'll put it on YouTube because that way they think that painting and that they might have to watch a commercial, a couple commercials, right? Okay, great. I'm getting paid. 
They're watching a couple of commercials. I'm getting paid. Yeah, and it might only be, say, a nickel for every X number of people. Fine. Those nickels add up. Those pennies add up. Those T-shirt sales add up. Hat sales add up. They do. Music streaming adds up. Do it the right way. The documentaries. The nice thing is, you're paying a researcher, you're paying an editor. A researcher and editor, you might be paying for two editors because it's nice to have a, a preliminary cut, right? They can then take those preliminary cuts and put them on YouTube, as I discussed before, right? But you can do it. You can do it. Documentaries would sell. One of the, the, the Purple Dragon in Detroit, one of the Mafia in, in Miami, one of the Mafia in Dallas. Um, would be good. You do an okay documentary on what the skim in Vegas. Yeah, you could do an okay documentary on um, what's going on in Canada, right? Those things would sell. Those things, I'm sorry, those things would watch. Those watch time adds up, right? I'm shocked that people aren't doing them because I'm not the only person who's come up with these ideas. I'm not the only one who's read the documentation that shows these ideas work. Why is it? Well, one, it's kind of hard to come up with money. I mean, I couldn't come up with five thousand dollars to save my life, right? Do I know people who might invest money? Don't know. Can I talk other people into doing things that might generate that money to do something like that? Maybe, maybe, maybe type population would realize, hey, why should we spend fifty grand or raise fifty grand? Because that's how much a an exploitation film is going to be to make fifty to sixty grand. When I can invest ten thousand dollars in a year of fourteen thousand or fifteen thousand dollars, then I can do. I can then make more movies and get that movie industry coming. I know the guys. I think they do a series of documentary films on cryptids, and I think they're up to their tenth film now. They're doing pretty good. They're doing very very well. And the first one wasn't the best production value in the world. That was pretty good production value because they put that money back into it. Yes, they're paying themselves so they'll continue to make these movies, but they're investing the rest of that money back in those productions. They're doing very well themselves. It can be done. It should be done. I know how to do it. Why other people aren't being done won't well, they fall in love with Hollywood. Oh, if I send my film, whatever it might be, to Film Festival ABC. Someone to see it, and they'll write me that check. No, but that's what they believe, because that's what Hollywood tells you. Hollywood wants you to do the Hollywood method. They want you to enter film festivals. They want you to go to them. They want you to move to L.A. God only knows why. I can do everything in my home, everything in my home, right, that I need to do to make a documentary. I would need a better computer than I have now, but that's a small thing, right? I think that that would be a good small thing. We can do an, an exploitation film. Again, I said 50000 might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less, right? With the stuff that you can get easily. Cast and crew would be an easy thing to get in Florida for, for an exploitation film. I mean, plot lines, plot lines make themselves. People want to get involved. People want to be part of film. There'll be no lack of trying to get extras and any exploitation film because it's fun. You can be a zombie for a day. You might be a biker for a day. You've got to know what you might be for a day. And then the day you get fed pizza. And then the day you have a couple of beers. And then the end of the day you get to meet other cast and crew. And you can and you get a t-shirt. You get that appreciation gesture. These things are huge, 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 huge. That's how it's done. But too many people in North Fence Met, none at all. No offense at all. Too many people want to do a Hollywood thing. They want to be in love with Hollywood thing. Oh, I'll go to this red carpet. I'll be part of the Oscars. No, you won't be. But again, I'm not here to bust your nuts. I'm not here to bust your balls. I'm not here to take away your dream. I'm here to tell you the facts as I see them. Right? Could I have done a better job with my documentary? Yes. Am I proud of my documentary? Absolutely 100% yes. Am I proud of my short film I made? No, I'm not. In fact, through the blessings of God, 
in heaven, I was able to sell it to Sony who keeps it on their shelf because they understand what they have now is basically, in my opinion, unusable. But I appreciate the fact that they saw how I thought about the film. They saw other issues I was dealing with at that time, and they're generous, generous enough to buy that film. Good luck with that. I owe them some type of debt. I'd be great if I could do something with them in the future, but who knows, right? It's a thing. It's, I mean, filmmaking is meant for the for the people who get depressed easily. God knows I'm one of them too, right? This is a constant effort. This is a constant effort. It's a lot of work. You can't sit there and do the casting call one day and start production the next. So a lot of things that go into it. A lot of things go into it. You know, scripts have to be written. Locations have to be found for a drama. Scripts have to be written. Locations have to be found. Same thing for the degree in documentaries, right? I mean, it would have been nice to shoot the documentary and feature some of the buildings that Frank used for different purposes, but they're torn down. You can't use the building that's not there anymore. If I did a documentary, say, in the Mafia in Detroit, part of that would be going to Detroit. Part of that would be seeing those, some of those buildings that still exist to put them in there, put them in the picture. This is where this took place. Or this is where this guy got shot. Or this is where this happened, right? Because people want to see that, right? I mean, anyway, I'm about running out of time. I appreciate the number of people listening right now live. Yeah, you go us. Uh, really, it means a lot to me. And yeah, I'm talking way too fast. But really, this is something really excites me. I really like talking about movies far more than I thought I would, right? Far more than I thought I would. Because there's no reason to think that you can't make a movie. None. Now, mind you, there might be financial reasons why you can't do it. There's no reason that you can't make a movie with this. There's no reason why you can't put your movie on YouTube. There's no reason why you can't put your movie on YouTube and get people watching. There's no movie, there's no reason why you can't make a couple of bucks, right? Can you get rich? Who knows? Can you have fun? Yeah, have fun. Do that Shakespeare in the park. Get your kids in the backyard with, a, with your poodle or your German shepherd and make a Godzilla film, right? Make a film about bright lights in the sky. Make a fun film. Put it on YouTube. Have a enjoy it. Right? If you like film, make film. Watch the movies you want to watch and see what kind of do with them. What can I do and whatever level you want to get involved in. Maybe it's in the backyard with your kids or your neighbors or your friends. Maybe you look around yourself and find out what little independent movie is going on that might need, need a crew member. Because people, crew members are needed from everything from sweeping the floor, making the coffee, holding the boom mic, right? But extras are needed. I was a great dead man on the floor. I was a great bartender. I was a great man in hat, right? That was fun. I was a great Dr. Dan. I lines. That movie got on Amazon Prime. Yeah, Arms and Prime. Right? Yeah. Anything can happen. Now, am I seeking to do more with film? Kind of, sort of, yeah. Am I seeking to do things with Totem Pole Nation? Yeah, that'd be fun. There's opportunities with them, with the fundraising to make something. You have to make something decent. Either it was a documentary or drama of some sort, right? Then anything else. Right? You don't know what you do until you try. You don't know what you do. You don't know what's going to happen until you try. You don't know what you can do until you say, hey, what do you think about this? There's no harm in trying things. There's no harm in failing. There's no need to fail by making simple mistakes that can be corrected before they happen, such as a movie sign releases, and a movie sign waivers, and a movie make sure you have insurance. It'd be nice to sign release first aid kit. And we're talking dramas, the first aid kit. Because that adds to me need a first aid kit or, or in my living room doing it with doing a, a documentary it kind of slip it, insurance well we can debate insurance but i don't think so maybe all errors and emissions but again it is what it is i mean you don't even have you don't even have anyway i don't i can't spend so much time doing this but i appreciate it all there it means a lot to me anybody here watch this when live was going on it's talking too fast and stuff but i was excited it happens. I want yay go me. I got two then. And, and if you have the opportunity to, it would be nice. I would appreciate it if you bought my book, The Mafia in Hollywood. It's on it's on Amazon and, and paperback. Um, it's on Kindle too. I think the Kindle's five bucks. I think the paperback's on ten. Um these things go a long ways. Anyway, 
Appreciate sure you can follow me at um, an X or it used to be Twitter now. It's called X at Walking Mob Two. Looking forward to it. There'll be more. Trust me, there'll be more. Talk to you later. And this will take a while before it actually shuts off. <laughs>